Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our ritual Mishnah Burish here. We are holding in Mishnah Burish Chelik Beis, and Mitzvah Hashem today we will complete Daf Nun Ches Amit Beis as well as Nun Tes Amit Aleph. So we are continuing to learn Hilchas Detilus Yadayim. We have a bit of ground to cover, so let's get started right away. Um, we're going to pick up on Nun Ches Amit Beis, four lines from the top in the Shulchan Aruch. Simon Kuf Samech Beis Sif Hey. Now, even though it looks like we have really a lot of ground to cover, much of what we're going to be saying is really going to be repetitions in various forms of what we've said over the last couple of days. I'm intending on not going into it in as great detail as we have in the past, because like I say, we're really just moving around the same pieces on the chessboard. So let's go, says the Mechaber Sifei. Mitoich ma shekasavnu. From what we've been saying until now, yisbayer lecha, it should be clear to you, tahad yod nitma abishiv shof chaverta, that this issue, that one hand could become tame from the other hand, dafka benotal yod achas, this is only true when you have washed one hand, vaachakach shiv shofa bechaverta, and then you go ahead and you touch it to the other hand. So, again, when do we have this issue with transferring Tumah from one hand to another? If we are going to wash the two hands independently, one of the other. So we intend on washing, let's say, the right hand first, and then washing the left hand. And what we've done is, we've washed one hand, let's say we washed the right hand with Mayim HaRishonim, and now the right hand is Mayim HaRishonim that are Tame on it, and now we go ahead and we touch the right hand to the left hand. Now we create all sorts of problems that we've discussed over the last two days because we're transferring Tumor from one hand to the other. However, says the Mechaber, Aval, however, Im Ratza Litel Betchila Shte Yadav Ka'achas, but if you set about to perform Natilus Yadayim, by washing both hands at the same time, noitel, that you could do. And we've really mentioned this already previously. If you want to wash both of your hands at the same time, for example, you have another party here who could take the cup and he could pour the Natilus Yadayim water onto both of your hands. So you're washing both hands at one time, noitel. You could go ahead and you could wash Natilus Yadayim that way, because in that case, we view both hands as being one. The Anon Metamois Zuezu. And in that case, one hand cannot be Metame, the other hand. Like I've said many times previously, when you wash one hand, when you wash your right hand until you dying, we're not concerned that part of the right hand might transfer Tuma to a different part of the right hand. Right? We don't worry about that. It's it's one hand, it's one act of the Tilus Yadayim, and we don't concern ourselves of half the hand transferring Tumma to the other half of the hand, etc., etc. When you wash two hands at the same time, we view those two hands as being one. And therefore, we don't concern ourselves that maybe during the Natilus Yadayim, one hand touched the other and transferred Tumma. For example, let's say you stick out both of your hands and another fellow is coming and he's pouring water over your hands. And let's say he starts with the right hand. He's doing both at the same time. But inevitably, some of one hand gets washed before some of the other hand. So let's say he washed the Tilus Yadayim and we're at a point where the water went all over the right hand. So really, at this moment, you could look at it, you could say, now the right hand has Mayim HaRishonim on it, and that Mayim HaRishonim is Tame. and now if the right hand touches the left hand, it transfers Mayim HaRishonim with Tuma from the right hand to the left hand, and now even if you wash the left hand, you can't be Metahar the left hand, because the water that's going on the left hand cannot be Metahar the Mayim HaRishonim from the right hand. No, we don't say that. Why don't we say that? Because when you're washing the Tils Yadayim on both hands at the same time, we do not look at it as being right hand and left hand. We look at it as if it's one hand doing one Tils Yadayim and there could be no 
transference of Tuma. That's what the Mechaber says here. Continues the Mechaber, And the truth is, in line with what we've learned earlier, even four or five people, who all put out their hands one next to the other, or one on top of the other, if you have enough water, and like the Mishnah is going to remind us, we learned earlier that for one revius, you could really wash two people's hands. So that means that one revius could wash four hands. If you have a half of a lug instead of a revius a lug, a revius a lug is a quarter of a lug. If you have a half a lug, so that's double the amount of water, you could use that to wash the hands of three or four people. Four people is already eight hands. So that means a chatzi lug, a half of a lug, could wash eight hands. So let's say four people come and they stick out their eight hands, all one right next to the other, and now the person who's going to pour the water onto their hands takes the kais with a half a lug and he's pouring water all over the hands. If the hands touch each other in the middle of the detil siyadayim, there's no concern of transferring tumma from one hand to the next. Why? Because all the hands are considered as one. Since we're setting about to wash them all with the Tilus Yadayim in one shot, it's considered one hand, and there's no transference of Tuma from one to the other. Let's take a look at the Mishnah Royce, Katnun, Shte Yadav Ka'achas. This is true if the intent over here is to wash the two hands at the same time. Aval, but not al Rakachas. But if somebody would wash the Tilus Yadayim only on one hand, so let's say he pours Mayim and Rishayim on his right hand. V'shafach mimeno al hashniya. And now what he wants to do is, he wants to take water from the right hand, using his right hand, and pour it onto the left hand. Now, let me just clue you in here of what the, the Mishnabru is trying to say, what the Chiddush, so to speak, of the Mishnabru is. We're saying until now that the, we have this concept that if you're washing numerous, multiple hands at the same time, they all get a din of yodai achas, and there's no transference of tumma from one to the other, and you can be retire all of the hands at one time. Says the Mishnah how about if somebody also sets out to wash the til siyadayim at one time, both hands? But what does that mean, that he wants to wash both hands at one time? What it means is he wants to put out his right hand, he wants to have somebody pour an until siyadayim onto his right hand. Now he's going to cup his hand, and with some of the water, he's going to pour it onto his left hand. You might think, okay, so could we consider that like both of his hands are yadai achas? If, because really what he wants to do is he wants to wash both of his hands with one pour. But not really, because really he's letting the, hand, the water come onto his right hand and into the cup of his right hand, and then he wants to pour it from his right hand to the left hand. Now, we learned earlier that that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because the tilus yadayim has to be from a keli, and you're not washing your left hand from a keli. You're trying to wash your left hand from your right hand. Now, even if you form your right hand into a cup, your right hand is still not a keli. So this the tilus yadayim doesn't work. That's what the Mishnah says over here. Again, let's see inside. The Mishnah says... <clears throat> If you wash one hand from the keli, and then you try to pour from the first hand onto the second hand, even if you didn't touch the two hands together, so there's no issue of transference of Tumah, and your intent from the outset was to effect Natilis Yadayim on the second hand with the same pour as the first hand, just you're going to catch the water in your first hand and pour it onto the second hand. Afiluhaki Tameya, the second hand remains Tame. The Chanal Besimit Kuftun Tesivav, because you did not wash from a Kaylee. Ice cotton on Aleph. The Mechaber said, 
Indeed, not only could you wash your two hands at the same time and have them be considered one hand, four or five people could line up all of their hands next to each other. And if they have one person pouring water on all of their hands, it's also nekshav kiyadachas. It's considered one hand, and we have no concern of transference of tumma from one to the next. Says the Mishnah is cut on Aleph, the Enon Metamis Zuizu. Ulael Besimin Kuf Samach Sif Yud Gimel. Earlier on in Simon Kuf Samach Sif Yud Gimel, I don't know if you remember, but Kuf Samach Sif Yud Gimel was a very complex Sif that took us several Shiurim. Ulael Besimin Kuf Samach Sif Yud Gimel Mavur, it is spelled out, Tibishas Atchak, under pressing circumstances. Let's remember, the minimum share of water for the Tils Yadayim is a Revia Salug. But we learned back in Simon Kof Sabach Sif Yud Gimel, not really. Really, two people could wash from one Revias. Then we said three or four people could wash from a half of a Revias. So the Mishnah is reminding us over here um, that you don't even need a Revias for each person. You could do Natil Siddhai for two people from one Revias. And Mechatzilug, if you have double a Revias, if instead of a quarter of a Lug, you have a half a Lug, Lishloisha Ul Arba, you could do Natil Siddhai on three or four people. Rakim Hispik Lava Yagideim called Sharon Natila Karai, so long as you have enough water that the water will cover the entire surface of the hands and the fingers, that is the requirement for Natil Siddhai. Sif Vav in the Machaber, says the Machaber. Natal shte yodav, let's say somebody washed both of his hands, the tils yodayim, zula atzma vezula atzma. So this person went to wash the tils yodayim, and he's not trying to do anything out of the ordinary, he's not trying to do anything unusual, he's going to wash in the normal way. He wants to wash one hand, and then wash the other hand. But he is doing a little bit different than what we do. What we do is really what the Mechaber told us about previously, we wash Mayim Arishayim on the first hand, then Mayim Shniim on the first hand, and then Mayim Arishayim on the second hand, and Mayim Shniim on the second hand. What this person is doing is he wants to wash Mayim Arishayim on the first hand, then Mayim Arishayim on the second hand, and then he's going to wash Mayim Shniim. Now what he does is like this. He washes Mayim Arishayim on one hand, then he washes my Rishonim on the second hand. Then he says to himself, oh, wait a second. I remember learning in the dishes here that really you don't have to wash each hand separately. Really, you could wash two hands together. So what he does is he washes my Rishonim on one, my Rishonim on the second one, and then he puts his hands together to wash my Shniim, both hands together at the same time. So <clears throat> the key point over here is from the outset of his Natilis Yadayim, he did not have the intent to perform Natilis Yadayim at both hands at the same time. When he started the Natilis Yadayim, when he began with Mayim Rishayim, his intent, and indeed what he did, was Mayim Rishayim on one hand and Mayim Rishayim on the second hand. Now, by Mayim Shniim, he's coming and he's washing both hands together. Now, what's the issue here? Let's see the, the Mechaber. <clears throat> So again, not al Yadav, he washed both his hands, Zula Atzma, one independently, Vizula Atzma, and the other one independently. Meaning, he did Mayim Rishonim on hand one, and then Mayim Rishonim on hand two. And then, Vinimlach. Then, like the Ramah says here in the parentheses, Pirish, what does it mean, Nimlach? Nisyayitz. Now suddenly he had an epiphany. He came up with a great idea. He came up with a great idea when it was time to wash Mayim Shnim. So now he puts his hands together. And now he pours Mayim Shnim on his two hands together. Guess what? Yodav Tameyos. His hands are Tame. <coughs> now, we already understand why his hands are Tame. The reason his hands are Tame is very Pashat. He poured Mayim Rishonim on his right hand. Okay, his right hand now has Mayim Rishonim that are Tame on it. Then he poured Mayim Rishonim on his second hand. Okay, so now his second hand has, has Mayim Rishonim on it that are Tame. Now he decides, ooh, let me wash Mayim Shnim on both hands together. So what does he do? 
He puts his hands together and he touches one to the other. So guess what he just did? He just transferred Mayim or Rishonim Danatame from the right hand to the left hand. And he also transferred Mayim or Rishonim Danatame on the left hand to the right hand. And this is the problem that we've been dealing with for the last two days. He transferred Tuma from one hand to the other. And now, even if you pour 10 gallons of water onto both hands, according to most Paiskim, it's not going to work. He's not going to be able to affect Tahara to his hands. Because remember, the Mayim Shnim could only be Metaher, Mayim or Rishonim, that are Tame from, the, from that hand. Mayim Shniim on the right hand could be Metair Mayim or Rishonim that are Tame from the right hand. But it cannot be Metair Mayim or Rishonim that are Tame from the left hand on the right hand. And what this guy did just now was he transferred the Mayim or Rishonim to Mayim from one hand to the other and from that one to the other one. So now he's up a creek without a paddle, and the only thing he could do is he has to dry both of his hands and do a do-over. So says the Mechaber. <clears throat> so the Mechaber said, now he came up with this genius idea that when he wants to wash Mayim Shniim, he should wash them together. So he touched the two hands together. And he tries to pour water on both hands together. His hands are tame. Why? Because when he touches the two hands together, in order to get the the one pour of Mayim Shniim onto both hands, Nitmu Yadav Bidigiyasam Zuluzu. His hands become tame from touching each other. The Mayim shall gav yadzu because the Mayim we shine him that are tame from one hand. Metame Mayim shall gav ichaverta will be metame the Mayim that's on the other hand. The gam is yad and also the hand and so too vice versa. Ugisha notal as shniim and now when you do pour the Mayim shniim loy tiru as we shine him the Mayim shniim are not going to be able to be metar the Mayim we shine him. Kevin shenit meis machvas chaverta. Because now you have Tame Mayim right hand Mayim Harishinim on the left hand, and you have Tame left hand Mayim Harishinim on the right hand. And the Mayim Shniim won't be able to help over here. So this guy, there's nothing he can do. Ella Adaraba, Gama Shniim Nitmubahen. Even the Mayim Shniim that you pour on them is going to become Tame. And therefore, he needs to dry his hands. And he has to go ahead. And if he, when the Mechaber says that he has to dry his hands, literally, that translates as he has to dry his hands and then he has to wash both hands at the same time. That's not what the Mechaber means. He doesn't have to wash both of his hands at the same time. What the Mechaber means is if this guy wants to do. What he set out to do, he changed his mind in the middle of the Tils Yadayim, and he decided he wants to wash both of his hands together at one time. Well, in that case, what he has to do is he has to dry his hands and then wash both hands together at the same time. Okay, so let's just recap what the Mechaber said over here. So the case that the Mechaber is giving me is like this. The reason the Mechaber is telling me this halacha over here in Sivav is because the Mechaber has said over and over again in different ways over the last couple of days. He keeps bringing up the point that when you wash two hands together at the same time, they are nechshav kiyad achas. They're treated halachically as being one hand. And therefore, there's no issue of transferring tuma from one to the other. That's what the Mechaber, that's the aside that the Mechaber has given us. Now here in Sivav, what the Mechaber is telling me is, but be careful. When I'm telling you that if you wash both hands together at the same time, there's no issue of transference of Tuma from one hand to the other, that's if you make up your mind to wash both hands at the same time from the outset of the Tilos Yadayim, and that's what you do. But that's not what happened in the case that he gave us in Sivav. In this case, what happened is, the guy set out to wash the Tilos Yadayim, and he washed my Rishonim one hand independent of the other. He washed my Rishonim on his right hand, and then he washed my Rishonim on his left hand. Then, before he washed my Shnim, he decided to put the hands together and wash my Shnim both hands at the same time. Says the Bechab, it's too late. It's too late. 
once you washed Mayim Rishonim, one hand separate from the other, now if you touch the two hands together, you're going to transfer Tumah from one hand to the other. Once you transfer Tumah from one hand to the other, game over. Now it doesn't matter what you do. Once you transfer Tumah from one hand to the other, even if you put 10 gallons of water on your hands, you can't be retire them. So now the only thing you could do is dry your hands and now wash over again. Now, if you dry your hands and you want to wash over again and you want to wash both hands together at the same time, fine, go ahead. Dry your hands, put your hands together and let somebody come and pour Mayim over both of your hands. That's fine if you want to do that because then you're doing it from the outset. That's what the Mechaber says here in Sivav. Now I'm going to go right into the Ramah Three lines up for the bottom, the almost the, the second to last word on the line, Haga. Now this Ramah threw me for a loop, and this Ramah cost me 45 minutes this afternoon because I was totally stumped by something that the Ramah says, and, and then I, I, I ain't a Baishan Lamad. Uh, somebody who's easily embarrassed can't learn. What does that mean? It's like the guy who's lost the man who's lost, and the wife keeps on saying, pull into the gas station and ask directions. But men don't like to ask directions because it makes them look like they don't know what they're doing. So men will drive for an extra hour and not ask directions. So that's ain't a Baishan Lamad. Don't be a fool because you're a Baishan, you wasted an hour. After 45 minutes of trying to figure out what this Ramah went, I picked myself up, I went to Ms. Madrish, and, and I asked a Paisik, I said, could you please explain to me the Ramah over here? He looked at the Ramah, he started laughing. He, he told me he realizes why I had the problem that I had, but he set me straight. It took 10 seconds, but you'll see what the issue was. The Ramah says like this, but let's, before we see the Ramah, before we see the Ramah, what did the Mechaber just tell me? The Mechaber essentially just told me, if you wash Mayim or Rishayim on one hand, and then you wash Mayim or Rishayim on the other hand, and then you touch the two of them together, you're going to transfer Tumah from one hand to the other, and you're going to be in a mess. And that's true, even if what you're trying to do is you're trying to wash Mayim Shneim on both hands at the same time. On that, says Drama, the Chol Shekein, now Chol Shekein is a Lashon of a Kav The Chol Shekein means certainly, right? The Chol Shekein certainly, Lizoher, you should take care that you should not take one hand that you only poured Mayim or Rishonim on and touch it to the second hand upon which you already poured Mayim or Rishonim and Mayim Shnim. Okay, so let's analyze this. The Mechaber told me if you poured Mayim or Rishonim on your right hand and you poured Mayim or Rishonim on your left hand, do not now go ahead and touch the two hands together. Because if you do so, you will transfer Tuma from the right hand to the left hand and from the left hand to the right hand and you're going to be in a mess. Okay. On that, says the Ramah, Kalshkein, certainly what you should not do is if you poured Mayim or Rishonim on your right hand, and then you poured Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim on your left hand, then certainly you should make sure not to touch the two hands together. Now, if the Ramaz says that that's a Kolsh game, it sounds like the second case is a bigger problem than the first case. In other words, the Mechaber says, don't do A. The Ramaz says, if the Mechaber says don't do A, then certainly you should not do B. Right? Kavachomer. If you, if you can't do A, Kavachomer, don't do B. Now I'm looking at this, I'm saying, what's the Kavachomer? What's the Kavachomer? The only difference between these two cases is that in the Mechaber's case, you have two hands upon which you only washed Mayim or Rishonim. So both hands have Mayim Tameim on them. The right hand is Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh from the right hand. The left hand is Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh from the left hand. Says the Mechaber, do not touch them together because if you do, you will transfer Tuma. You'll get to put right hand Tuma on the left hand and left hand Tuma on the right hand. That's what the Mechaber says. Says Drama, Kolshkein, certainly, 
if you have to be careful not to touch the two hands together in that case, then certainly you have to be careful not to touch the two hands together in another case. What's that case? Where the right hand only had Mayim Rishonim, and the left hand had Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim. Why is that case worse? If anything, that case is better. In the Mechabra's case, both hands have Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh on them. In the Ramaz case, one hand has Mayim Rishonim, the right hand has Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh, because you only poured Mayim Rishonim on the right hand, but the left hand doesn't even have Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh, because on the left hand you poured Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim. So in the Mechaber's case, both hands have Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh. In the Ramah's case, only one hand has Mayim Rishonim that are Tameh. Yet, says the Ramah, if the Mechaber says, be careful not to touch the two hands together in his case, then Kavachomer, you should be careful not to touch the two hands together in my case. I'm looking at this, and I'm, what's the Kavachomer? What's the Kavachomer? I'm at a total loss. I cannot figure out what the Kavachomer is. I had decided in my mind, I'm going to say this year tonight, and I'm going to say I'm stumped, and I don't have an answer. But Pilpel Chaverim is always the answer. I went to the Bismadrish. I went to the Bismadrish. I met... My good friend, Harav Menachem Goldman Shlita, a, a tremendous Pesach, and I, I, sh- I showed him the Ramah. I said, Yelam, Yelam Rabbeinu, what's the Kosh game? So he looked at it, he looked at it, he thought for five seconds, he started laughing. He said, yeah, the Kosh game is not a halachic Kosh game. He says, I'll tell you what the Kosh game is. The Kosh game is like this. Remember, in the Mechaber's case, what was the thinking of the person who washed the Tilsi Dime. In the Mechaber's case, the reason the person who did this thought he could get away with it is because his plan was, I washed my Rishonim on the right hand, I washed my Rishonim on the left hand. Now, I'm going to wash my Shneim on both hands. And I want the my Shneim to be Metaher, all of the my Rishonim. And he makes a mistake. He thinks to himself, I want to wash Mayim Shniyam on both hands. I know that there's a halacha that by Nitilus Yadayim, you could put both hands together and they're Nechshav Kiyad Achas. So that's what I'm going to do for Mayim Shniyam. I didn't do it for Mayim Rishayim, but I'm going to do it for Mayim Shniyam. So now I put my both, both my hands together and somebody pours Mayim Shniyam on both my hands and, and the guy is thinking that that Mayim Shneim is going to be Matar all the Mayim Rishayim. What's his mistake? His mistake is he doesn't realize that this Eitz of putting two hands together and making them Kiarachas only works if that's what you did already by the Mayim Rishayim. But if you didn't do it by the Mayim Rishayim, now when you touch the hands together, you're transferring Toma from one hand to the other. But the guy had a Cheshben. He had a Cheshben. He had a logical Cheshben. His cheshbon was, I washed my Rishonim on both hands, albeit independent of each other, and now I'm going to wash my Shneim on both hands, albeit together. But I want the Mayim Shneim to wash away all, to be matar, all the Mayim Rishonim. Says the Ramah, if the Mechaber tells me that that doesn't work, then Kolshkein, you have to be careful in my case. In my case, says the Ramah, you washed my Rishonim on the right hand, you washed Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim on the left hand. In that case, the person who's washing the Tilz Yadayim doesn't even have any reason to think why he should have to wash Mayim Shneim on his left hand. As far as he's concerned, he thinks, I already washed Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim on my left hand. My left hand is completely done. The Tilz Yadayim is completely over on my left hand. So should he go ahead now and touch his right hand to his left hand, he doesn't even realize that he has a problem. He thinks that the El Siedayim on his left hand is completely done, but he doesn't realize that he just transferred right hand Tumma to his left hand, and therefore he has to dry his left hand and wash all over again, and so to his right hand. That's what the Ramah means, Kolshkein. It's not a Kolshkein that halachically this case is worse than the other. It's a Kolshkein based on the intent of the person doing the Tilos Yadayim. In this case, the guy doesn't even think that he has a problem on his left hand. Says the Ramah Kolshkein that this is a problem.
Okay. Now we need to see the Mishnah Brewery here on Sifav. Says the Mishnah Brewery, cut nun base. Nitmu Yadav. Again, the Mechari said, you washed Maim Rishayim on both hands, one independent of the other. Now you decide you want to wash Maim Shniim both hands together. You touch the two hands together, you transfer to Nitmu Yadav. Says the Mishnah Brewery, why are the hands going to become Tame? The Maim Rishayim Kishem Chusim Erevius. Because whenever you wash Maim Rishayim with less than a Revius, Tameim him, the Bible reshine him, are tame, like we've seen already 50 times. And now the two hands are going to be metame each other. Now this person wants to wash Maim Shneem by putting the two hands together. The Mishnah is reminding us that really from one Revius, you can wash Maim Rishaydim on both hands and Maim Shneem on both hands. The Chanabah said, Dalad, the Hey, I was cutting on Dalad. The Ramah said, The Choshke Li Zahir. Says the, the Mishnah Brura, from the language of the Ramah, from the language of the Ramah, it is Mashma, that the Halacha in the Ramah's case is the same Halacha as the Halacha in the Mechabah's case. He doesn't make a distinction between the two. If anything, he says that this is a Koshkein, this is a Kavachimer. So it sounds like the Ramah is saying that in his case, the Halakha Lamaisa would be the same as the Halakha Lamaisa in the first case. Now, what's the Halakha Lamaisa in the, in the, in the Mechabah's case? The Halakha Lamaisa in the Mechabah's case is that you have to dry both hands and you have to do a do over. So the Mashmois is that the same halacha would apply in the Ramos case. That is a do-over, and you have to dry both ends and, and wash again. If you touched the right hand that only had my Rishonim to the left hand that had my Rishonim and Shnim, you got to dry both hands and wash over again. And indeed, that's what the Lavush writes. But... The Mishnah sends us to yesterday's shear to Oiskat Memches. She is days Papaiskimaze. We had one shita on yet in yesterday's shear in Mishnah Bura Oiskat Memches that says if you have a hand where you washed Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shnim, and then that hand went into contact with the other hand, we did have a shita that said that you don't have to dry that hand. All you have to do is pour water on it again because you already were retired that hand completely. Therefore, when you touch the, the right hand to the left hand, the left hand is the one that had my Rishonim and Shneem. When you touch the right hand to the left hand, it's true that you're putting left hand, tum, you're putting right hand Tame Rishonim onto the left hand, but the left hand does not have a double dose of Tama. It only has a single dose of Tama because its own Tama is already completely gone. You had Mayim Rishonim and Mayim Shneim. So the left hand's own Tuma is already all gone. So now when you touch the right hand to it, you're getting Tuma from the other hand, but it's only a single dose of Tuma. And we did have a sheet that had said that by a single dose of Tuma, if you pour another pour of water on it, you could wash it away. Siv Zayin. <coughs> Bottom line, Nun Ches Beis. Let's see how far we can get. Okay, says the Bechara. Im shif shef yadoy yadov zu bazu. Let's say you go ahead and you wash a full netilas yadayim. Okay, I'll give you two cases here. In both cases, your hands are completely tar. Either you washed mayim rishaynim and mayim shniim on both hands, or you washed each hand with a revius or more. In either case. Your hands, both your hands, are completely tar, and the water on your hands are completely tar. So you did a perfect detail siyadayim, but your hands are still wet. But you, you washed a perfect detail siyadayim. Says the Mechaber, im shif shef yadai zubazu. Now you wash the perfect detail siyadayim, and now you rub your hands together. Now, there's no issue of transference of tumma from one hand to the other, because there is no tumma. You washed my Rishonim and Shneem, or you washed with more than a Revius. So there's no transference of Tumah, because there is no Tumah. So what's the problem? What's the concern? Says the Mechaber, Im shiv shef bazu. If you're going to wipe your hands together, Yizahar, you should take care. 
שלא ייגע חוץ ממוקים שנפלו בוי מים. That when you, want, when you rub your hands together, you should not touch outside of the area that the Nitilus Yadayim waters went. And we'll describe that in a minute. Let's just read a little bit further. Why? Because should you do so, the hands will become tame once again. What does the Bechabe mean? So let's remember, we had a very basic machlaikis, and we referred to these two shitas. There was the shitas Rav HaPaiskim, and then there was the Rajba. The Rajba holds that when you wash the Tilas Yodayim, the Rajba holds, it was my trusty ruler, the Rajba holds that when you wash the Tilas Yodayim, you only have to wash up until the knuckles. We Paskin, we wash all the way up to the wrist. Now, remember what we learned previously. We said according to the Rajba, you only have to wash up until the knuckles, but the Rajba agrees that the entire hand, even from the base of the fingers down to the wrist, does have tumma. But he says, as far as the tils yadayim for chulin, when you're washing the tils yadayim to be kaveh sudala pas by chulin, you don't have to wash the entire hand. You only have to wash the fingers, and that's enough. But again, but he agrees that this Tuma down here, that he agrees. If Mir Hashem, we should have a Beis Hamikdash tomorrow, and and we'll have Kahanim and Truma and everything else. It, when they go to wash their hands for Truma, they're going to have to wash all the way down to the wrist. The Rashi agrees to that because he says the Gzera Stam Yodai Mashdias Latuma goes on the entire hand. But for Chulin to be Kaveya Suud Alapas, you only have to wash the fingers. Oh. So now, says the Mechaber, who may ikra din paskins like the Rajba, says the Mechaber, when you wash the Tilus Yadayim, so you washed a beautiful new Tilus Yadayim, but you did it like the Rajba, so you only washed the fingers. You only washed up until the knuckles. So, you washed Mayim Rishonim, you washed Mayim Shneim, you washed Mayim Rishonim, you washed Mayim Shneim, or you washed with a full revius on each hand. So your fingers are completely tar, and the mayim, shine, the mayim on your fingers are completely tar. There's no tummy here. So you know what? You could do this all you want. You could touch your fingers together now all you want, and there's no issue with transference of tumma. That's no problem. But you know what you can't do? You can't go ahead and touch over here. That you can't do. Assuming that when you washed, the water only went on your fingers, then if your hand is wet from the tilus yadayim, you can't touch the palm of your hand. Because if you touch the palm of your hand, now you picked up tumma from the palm of your hand. You have a wet, you have a wet hand, you have wet fingers, you touch the tummy palm of your hand, you're gonna pick up tumma and you're gonna have a problem. But According to us, we wash all the way to the wrist. If you wash all the way to the wrist, then what the Mechaber says does not hold true. Because what's the words of the Mechaber? You have to make sure not to touch beyond where the water of the Nitil Siadayim went. But we paskin that the Nitil Siadayim water has to go to the wrist. Now, if you wash all the way to the wrist, and then after you wash, you take your wet hand, your wet fingers, and you touch your forearm, you don't pick up any tumma from your forearm because there is no tumma on your forearm. The halachas of the Tils Yadayim have no jurisdiction on the forearm. The, the chazal would never go your tumma on the forearm, so you can't pick up tumma from the forearm. So let me just read Siv Zayin again inside, and then we'll see what we just said in the Mishnaburu. The, the Bechari said, you washed the Tils Yadayim, and you washed like the Rajba. You only washed up until the knuckles. Im shiv shef yad of zubazu. If now you want to wipe your hands together, yizar, you should take care. Shelo yiga chutz mimakim shenaf lubay mayim. Don't touch beyond where the water went. If the details you dying went until the base of the fingers, you could do this, but don't do this. Why? Because neishein metama zubazu. Because if you do touch beyond where the water went. On the hand, you're going to pick up Tumma from the other hand, and you're going to transfer Tumma from one hand to the next. 
says the Mishnah Rai's cotton on Ches. Im shiv shef, hainu, af she shafak aleim revius babas achas, even if you washed both hands with a full revius, oi she kvar shafak maim shniyam al shtay adav, or you already washed maim rishonim and maim shniyam on both hands, so your hands are completely tar, and the water on your hands are completely tar, dein metamen zemizeh, and therefore, there's no issue of transference of Tuma from one hand to the next. Mikamakim, nevertheless, im yigalamailumimakim shigiu amayim. But if you go above the point where the water of the tilsi yadayim went, then uh yitamu minigiyasan. Then your hands are going to pick up Tuma from the point that you touched. Ice cut nunva chutz mimakim. And this is the critical Mishnabura. Says the Mishnabura, Mairi. We're talking about a case where you did like the Rashba and you only washed up until the knuckles. Where according to many Paiskim, most notably the Rashba, and above that, we're saying above, we mean above, above the knuckles, going higher towards the body, even though the Rashba Paskins that you don't have to wash beyond the knuckles for Kviasud Alapas by Chulin, but he agrees that it's a Makam Tuma, till the Truma Tzarek Lital Gamsham. If a Kayan wanted to eat Truma, he would have to wash beyond the knuckles. So it is an area of Tuma. So since it's a Makam Tuma, if you touch it with a wet hand, you're going to pick up Tuma. Aval, however, says the Mishnabur, but if you wash up it to the wrist like we do, we don't have to worry about touching the forearm. Because all the Paiskim agreed that there's no Tuma on the forearm. Now, says the Mishnabur of Adan, you should know. This whole thing, even according to the Rajba, where we're saying that you have to be careful not to touch the area of the hand beyond the knuckles. This is only true if your hands are still wet. If you already dried your hands, ain't then you don't have to worry about where you touch. Because you're not going to pick up Tumah anymore if your hands are already dry. And even if your hands get wet later on, less lumbar, we don't have to worry about it. Once you do a complete Natil Siyadayim and you dry your hands, the Natil Siyadayim is over. Once the Natil Siyadayim is over, we're not worried anymore about transference of Tumah. This would be like the Shiloh that I discussed yesterday. If you washed the Natil Siyadayim, and then a half hour later, in the middle of the chasana, your hands got wet from ice cubes, and you said shalom aleichem to somebody who didn't wash. We don't, we don't say that you pick up tumma from his hands, even though his hands are unwashed hands and your hands are wet. Why? Because the Natilis Yadayim is over. This is only an issue during Natilis Yadayim. Okay? I actually thought that we were going to finish the test of an aleph as well, but we already have established that I'm not very good at this. So we're going to stop over here with Sifches. Thank you so much for joining me for Liban Atari, the Slus of Liban Atari, Shivy Megan, and Gans Klai Yisrael, the Rosh Hashanah, should send Yeshua's for first, Panos, and Shadukim to all those in need. We should be Zaychet to see the BSK of Tzedek, Bemehera, Vyamenu, Amen, be well.